cooling for the transmission comes from the normal cooling system of the engine. You've got an inlet pipe there, an outlet will return there. So the fluid comes in, it gets branched off here and it goes to one of the two disc valves here. That then goes to the coolers. You've got the gear oil cooler back here and you've got the clutch oil cooler on the other side. Goes through those uh, and then back via the return. Control of the disc valves here that control the, the cooling flow. They are vacuum operated so it gets fed a vacuum line from the, the vacuum pump via a solenoid and then down to these bellows. That bellows when activated pulls it in like that and that rotates a disc around. When it's deactivated it's open and when it's like that so it's activated it closes off the flow. So if you lose power or vacuum or something like that you'll always get flow through to the, the coolers. There is the disc valve out of the car. I'm not sure if you can see that. When I activate it, this is what happens. You see, they close that off and it just opens that up. Easy. To disassemble, this is pretty simple. The first thing we want to do is disconnect the lever here from the actuating arm of the bellows. Don't try and push on the uh, the lever here because that can break what we want to do is get a screwdriver in the gap in here and just gently push it in there and separate this thing here from the lug that sticks through that hole. Just lever them against each other because this thing is going to lever off sideways because it's a bellows this arm that actuates it can actually uh, move left and right really easily whereas this one here you want to be careful with because those can break. And now we can just separate that apart like that. And then once it's apart like that, so it's separated, now what I'm going to do is twist this counterclockwise. So like that, and then that will come out like that. When I'm installing these, I'm going to put it in there and make sure that goes over the knob where it's going to go. Okay, because then once it's like that, I can just push that into place and then just press that together. And to separate that from the bracket, because you've just got this single metal bracket here which holds onto this whole unit, just a single torque screw down there, uh, remove that and this thing comes apart. Because I'm assuming they sell this whole unit as a separate item. If you need to remove and replace this disc valve, this is pretty hard to get at. You'll need to open the top cover of the engine. You'll probably need to remove the intake manifold and the boot that sits over the top here. Uh, and the throttle housing, uh, which is a bit of effort uh, to get access to this down here. And the wall of the car sits about there, and there's sort of a little cut out there, and there's a ledge about there. Um, and then obviously, it's basically the wall of the boot of the car. So this is pretty difficult to get access to. There'll be two solenoids here. There's one that that hose there is going to go into. There's one that that one there is going to go into. You can remove those if you like. There will be two electrical connectors that sit on those. There are slots in the top here where you just stick a screwdriver down in those and leave those down and wiggle those solenoids off just to get those out of the way if you think you need to. This uh, electrical plug here, to remove that, that's got barbs on it that look like that. So if you get a pick tool, and remembering like the wall of the car is about there somewhere, I use a tool like that so I can reach around there and on the other side to release that just to get that out of the way to give you a bit more room and what we're trying to do because the metal bracket here runs on the right hand side of the the valve I need to firstly remove the uh, the connection clip here for the the coolant hose and move that off I need to disconnect a screw in here which allows this disc valve to come out and then I can disconnect this sounds easier said than done because out of, the, out of the car like this, it's relatively simple, but when it's in the car, there is very little room to move. But what we're trying to do is get, there's a clip, I'm not sure how much you can see there, but there's a clip on the other side here, which is exactly the same as that. So I'm just going to remove that. Again, the wall of the car there is hard, so you might need to get in here somewhere like that to remove that. I'll just move that out of the way just to show you what you need to do. And then once I have done that, 
I need to remove the little screw that's on the inside here. And what you'll need is a long T20 Torx driver. Hopefully you'll be able to see where that screw is and where my thing's going into. And you won't be able to see this. You'll just be able to do it by feel. You can see where it goes into looking down here on the other side. But you'll just need to get a little driver in there like that and a little ratchet and remove that off. And obviously it's going to be hard not to drop this. Let's just see where that goes when that falls off. Yes, that just fell onto the ground. So that's just going to fall down into your engine bay somewhere. So maybe get a some sort of magnetic tool in there for the last couple of turns to get that off. And then once that comes off, now we need to separate the hose over here from the disc valve. Grab hold of that and hold onto it. And now we can move that out this way a little bit so it's out of the lugs that hold this. And if you twist that, then that will release the sort of stickiness between the valve and the hose. Then that hose there can come off and then the disc valve can come out. And with that disc valve out like that, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect that connection there. Now depending on how this is, when this was in the car, this was all the way around here, so it's going to be very difficult to get a tool onto that. If that's the case and you need to, to disconnect the bellows from here, what you want to do is get your screwdriver down. This is the arm from the bellows that drives the lever here. Put it in there like that and then lever it out. Make sure it's leave it all the way out and sitting there like that. And then I can rotate this anti-clockwise and then that just pulls straight out. And now it's going to be easier to get access to this clamp here. So now I can lever that one off. If I now just twist that, that'll come out and now I can replace that valve. Obviously the reverse of that for the install, when you are installing it, put that in place here like that first without putting the clamp on and check that the lugs on the other side here are going to align correctly with the, uh, with the, the bracket here. And then you can either pull that out to put that on or just put the clamp on from that position. Once it's in place like that, before I put the screw in, I actually want to have that out so I can put the bellows in. And the reason for that is because I don't, it's really hard to get this on correctly because what I want to do is put it in and put the hole there over the top of the knob so I need to be able to see that. So it's like that. And then I'm going to rotate it down. And then when I push this together, make sure you squeeze it together with your fingers. You don't, because if it's like that and you just push that, you'll probably snap the arm off uh, of this bit at the back here of the disc valve. So you need to squeeze that together like that. And then once that's in place, now I can feed that back in there. I can put the other pipe on. Put the other clamp on. And then I'll need to put that torque screw in there. So I'm probably going to use a small magnetic tool to put it in there, give it a couple of turns so it's in there in place, and then put my torque driver in there. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty easy to drop and never see it again. If you need to replace any of the components here, uh, relatively simple. There's a bracket that sits over the top here with two screws. You just remove that. Uh, it's also connected there to the, the flange here which holds onto the disc valve so you just move that out of the way. That holds onto the park brake uh, cable. If you just pop off the park brake cable down here, you just pull that off and then you can just move that to the side with that bracket. Or you can disconnect it from the bracket, it's entirely up to you, but you just move that off to the side. And then this can be removed. Uh, a couple of things we need to do to do that. If we disconnect these coolant connections there and there, and the vacuum line at the top there. So just pull that out of there and then this whole thing will come out. And so you can just pull off the, the vacuum connection at the top there. I've moved those two clips out of the way there. The, the variety that when you clip together, they hold uh, separated with that little lug in there. And to release those, once you put them in place later on, you just get a screwdriver through there and just lever this tab down and it'll just pop closed. And with it like that, 
to separate this is now pretty easy. We can just grab hold of this and just rotate it around like that whilst we hold the hoses and they'll just pop off pretty easily. To remove this oil cooler here or just to disconnect these points here because they're leaking, uh, from what I have observed, I would need to pull this whole thing off and because it pulls out this way. I've heard of people removing this screw and just uh, pulling these out hard. The way this works is that these will swivel out and these stick in about that far or so. Um, so I could not get those out and I don't think I'd be able to get them in safely without doing damage. So uh, the way I would do this, there are three screws that hold on the cooler itself. There's uh, two at the top there and one at the bottom there. You remove that screw there, that clip that holds the two pipes in just falls away and then this whole thing can just be removed out this way. This screw here from the top of the engine bay uh, is relatively easily accessible. This one is buried a fair way down there because sort of the wall of the, uh, the engine bay sits about there so it's a bit hard to get access to and this one you should be able to get access to underneath it because it's just next to the drive shaft flange. So with those screws removed there, that one becomes loose. That clip there, that just pulls out easily once that screw is removed. And now these all just wiggle out this way. Expect a whole bunch of oil is going to come out. There are the connection points there with a couple of O-rings. And the connection points at the top here, you don't get access to um, that one there until you remove this one here. And the way this is constructed, obviously you've got that little clip that just holds over the top. The O-ring is in the cooler and the pipe has a flange that just slots straight down into the, into the O-ring. The screws that hold everything on, you've got that one there which is that M8 which was there. I personally would be replacing that with a standard class 8.8 uh, galvanised screw. So I'm not sure if you can get hold of these things. That one is 15 millimetres long and the three that hold on the, the oil cooler are 12 millimetres long. That one's uh, an M6, so again I would just replace it with a class 8.8 uh, galvanised steel screw and I'd put 10 newton metres on that. Removal of this oil cooler here, clearly you would have needed to uh, disconnect these uh, coolant pipes and have drained the coolant before then but then there are five screws around the outside here uh, and that'll allow us to take this top portion off and then we're going to remove another couple of screws underneath that which will remove the port plate which is the thing that connects it to the uh, transmission itself and with those five screws uh, removed there are two long ones there they go all the way through to the transmission casing and the short ones here uh, they just hold on to the port plate. I would be replacing these with uh, metal screws, some galvanised screws. They're M6, so I'd put 10 newton metres on those. They're 20 mils long, they are 55 millimetres long. And then this thing just comes straight off. You'll have that, which is your cooler. You'll have this, which is the gasket in between the two. And then we have the port plate itself, and there are three more screws that need to be removed from that. These are available as a spare part from Porsche. I personally would reuse this uh, if I could look at it and check that all of this bonded gasket is in good condition. And when we look at it in a moment, you'll see that there's like the oil part of this is basically zero pressure. Uh, so that's not going to be where the leak is, it would be from the, uh, the coolant side. So the way I would do this is if I was to um, think about reusing this, I would fit this all together and then I would pressure check at the coolant uh, connections to check that it wasn't leaking and if that was the case, and I'd probably use that at about 30 psi, about 2 bar, and if that was the case I'd be happy to reuse that. And with those three screws removed, if you wanted to replace those, they're 32 millimetres long. And this is doweled in a couple of spots, uh, so you'll have to wiggle this off. And then once it comes off, you'll see, and it may either stay with it or it might uh, come with the oil pump itself. But we've basically got the oil pump parts there. And that's basically the two parts of a standard little oil uh, pump you can see the the dots on this for the orientation when it's uh, installed 
and this thing just keys into the back of the, the pinion shaft and that's the thing that actually turns it. And for install, the way that I've found is, for me, the easiest way to do this is to put, especially if it's in this orientation because it just wants to fall out otherwise and you want to key this in properly, I'm going to put that on but you'll be able to see the circle of where it's worn on the aluminium of where this pump um, piece here needs to go. Then this can just slot down straight over the top. And then once it's there, you can push that home onto those dowels and then we're just going to screw everything back together again.